hearing. It's what you hearing. Listen. It's what you hearing. Listen. It's what you hearing. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen. Next gonna give it to you. Fuck wait for you to get it on your own. Next go deliver to you. Not open up the door to spread. Mr. Cropper here. Let's talk about obleftivism, something I'm trying to get my head around. Notice some of you are pretty damned annoyed um, at the use of the word. It really, really upsets some people. Are those the obleftivists who, who get upset at it? <laughs> this guy doesn't know anything. Who the hell is this guy? Bruno's Obleftivism Cafe. I don't know when was the last time I watched a video with such a mess as this guy. Are you kidding me? This guy's crazy. First of all, he spends a bunch of time on this book by Jeff Walker. Okay? Where's the book? I want to show you the cover of the book. It doesn't matter. It's the book by Jeff Walker called The Ayn Rand Cult. Uh, I, I got that book in high school and read it. Oh, there it is. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's a garbage screed. Get it and read it for yourself if you want. It's poorly written. Very poorly written. And uh, there it is. The Ayn Rand cult. He shows the back, but it's brilliant. And uh, it, it's it, it's garbage. You know, everything from, from saying that she was Nietzschean to saying that she claimed she never changed her philosophy, all kinds of garbage. Um, so, all right, well, I don't know where to start. I'm going to go to 13 minutes. This guy's garbage. And uh, <coughs> 13 minutes he starts talking about something substantive. Oh, egalitarianism. So, so he doesn't know what equality is. I was going to do a thing about uh, equality before the law. And we did that the other day with the Greek Pnix uh, video. What's the term for equality before the law? Isonomia. Iso meaning single, whatever. Okay, isonomia, equality before the law. What does that mean? Now, egalitarianism means equality of every human being, right? The Greek concept was equality of humans before the law, right? So, where, where, where's the disconnect here? Now, I don't know what he means by egalitarianism because he, he, he never gives a definition, but he's sure upset about egalitarianism. But, um, there's no, there's, there's no equality of human beings um, that's meaningful. There's no way to even talk about it meaningfully unless we just say that we're all equal as a basic unit in whatever way we're interchangeable in some, some basic way. That's the only way it's meaningful, and that's how we do it. With a, that's how the Greeks did it. They said, well, as far as the law is concerned, human beings are interchangeable. It doesn't take cognizance of the individual. It only takes cognizance of the individual's actions. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Okay, let's let him. Leftism. You know what my main things is? Uh, egalitarianism and, and uh, equalism. So, the atheist hard right is extremely anti-equalist and anti-egalitarian. While classical liberalism is in most cases equalist and egalitarian both. Now if that's his understanding is just the modern picture of egalitarian leftists versus the right, how does he identify those? Oh God, is this a guy who believes that people on the right uh, have their heads on straight enough that they can they can uh, face the facts of uh, the incarceration and murder rates of African Americans? Is he so hard-headed and objective that he can face the fact that African Americans murder at a higher rate? And therefore he thinks, since that's an objective fact, he can therefore do something about that, then. Is, is this one of those guys? Now, he also seems to be one of the guys who wants to... He says that we, our 
our uh, country is our little patch of land and nobody can come into it. I think he, he's definitely of that group and uh, he thinks Ayn Rand was of that group before writing out the Shrugged or something like that. Hoy polloi. So, now, uh, uh, somebody asked Ayn Rand, was she against immigration and all these people coming into her, our, her country? Our country, the country. And she said, that's a ridiculous question. How could I be against immigration when I wouldn't be alive if I were? So she was in favor of immigration. Now, uh, can some objectivists point me to where Ayn Rand was in favor of open borders? Because she was in favor of immigration? Because she thought that immigration should, should, be, some, should be a value that Americans hold and, and allow? That we should, should we, we should allow people from around the world to come to our country? therefore have open borders? I just want to see the connection there. It seems like a non sequitur. Does anybody else see that that's a bit of a non sequitur? Where, where do we say open borders? Now, logically it's the floating platonic conclusion. And I think that it should be that way. And if we didn't have a welfare state, I think it would be fine. Open borders would be fine. It would just basically be the big party spot of the world, right? Um, everybody else is going to church in their little village, uh, in their farming community or whatever, but the people who come to America are going to strip clubs at the in the skyscrapers with electricity, flying airplanes around, driving cars. So um, it's the place where the party's at, okay? Now, you can't go there and misbehave. They'll shoot you or put you in jail faster and your head will spin. They have more laws and more police officers there than anywhere else in the world. Okay? That's what I think open borders means. I don't, I don't think that it's reasonable to have a massive welfare state that costs us a goddamn huge pile of money every time somebody comes here. I don't think it's reasonable to bring people here under that circumstance. We've got to get rid of the welfare state. And we should have... Um, immigration minimized and certainly no Muslims until we get rid of the welfare state. I don't want immigration while, we, while it costs us money to bring immigrants in. That's reasonable. Can anybody show me where we have to have open borders though? That's an interesting thing. Okay. This guy's a mess. So, Ayn Rand is actually shrug is trying to tell us that objectivism is a philosophy for everyone. For everyone. Well, okay, so the fountainhead in the Fountainhead, objectivism was the philosophy for the over guy, for, for Howard Rourke, who was born superior. He says this at the beginning of the video. Uh, but Atlas Shrugged is the philosophy for everybody. Everybody can be an objectivist now. Whereas the Fountainhead was for the superior people. Well, the point about the Fountainhead was that everybody should behave and think like Rourke. So, this guy is a mess. He is a mess. He doesn't know what egalitarianism is, he misses the point of the Fountainhead, and he misses the point of Atlas Shrugged. Um, and, and, he, and, and, and he doesn't say anything substantive enough for me to even address. Very frustrating. I watched the video twice. Oh, to hell with the world. Be in contempt and forget about it. Just think about your own life. You know, the other people are just, you know, you might find some good people around, but for the most part, just focus on yourself and your own ideas and make the best of the, of the life you have. Okay, that's the Fountainhead view. Make the best of your life you have. You're not going to find many important people around. She did have a view, something like this. She t talked to Isabel Patterson, and she said maybe uh, it's not true that most people are second-handers. So maybe I shouldn't... So basically, her should she have a philosophy aimed at the top individual somewhere, the supreme individual, and not worry about the second-handers, and that's sort of what she was moving towards? Or should she think more about her philosophy as a philosophy for everybody or something like that? Now, ultimately, in order to write Galt's speech, she had to have all this figured out. She had to iron out all these pieces. Um, and then she kept writing after she published that Atlas Shrugged. She wrote for a couple more decades. So there's a lot of stuff to iron out about her philosophy. But, clear back during the Fountainhead, 
it's interesting to note that she did have this question of what is proper for a philosophy, really, who, to who, to, who is the philosophy going to speak to? Now, she never really came to anything except if you choose to focus and be rational, then you have to use your mind and be rational in order to be happy. That's all she ultimately came to. Leonard Peikoff took it one step further, and he said, you can have three different views of how to think. You can integrate things properly by looking at reality and using reason. You can misintegrate things by choosing accidental things that aren't, aren't important and integrating around those. And you can disintegrate, which means to ignore integrations and try to live in a sloppy way. Those people rely on the integrated people to stay alive. And the misintegrated people build societies. The disintegrated people tear them down. And the integrated people are the rare people who are the best people and the good people. That's Leonard Peikoff's taking it forward a little bit further. All right. Don't focus on others. That's what she's telling us with the fountainhead. But with Atlas Shrugged, she's saying, no, no, if only people come to abandon altruism, then everything will be fine. Everything, the society will change thanks to the change in ideas. This is not... Now, the founding fathers of the United States abandoned altruism. They said, everybody just go live for yourself. You know, and also you can have guns. Right? They abandoned altruism. And it changed the whole world. Look at the difference between Soviet Russia and the United States of America. That is the difference between altruism and freedom. Okay, so that's how bad altruism is in practice. Soviet Russia. Now, if you don't believe that, go read the Gulag Archipelago. If you don't believe that, read anything by about, uh, you know, the Soviet history. Well, I don't know about anything. But go try to learn something about it. Um, that's altruism in practice. So giving up altruism is a tremendous, amazing boon to, to society and culture and history. Now, you may say the Founding Fathers made it possible for to people to be altruistic more so than ever, because they allow you to have wealth, which allows you to actually give your wealth away. Whereas if you're poor, you can't give your wealth away. But I say you're just bending over backwards like a pretzel, and that's stupid. Uh, free people create wealth. Slaves don't. And if you spend all your time being a slave to other people, you're not productive. Uh, this is pure classical liberalism. This is Isabel Patterson. I have only read very, very little of Isabel Patterson's book. I found it terribly, I don't know, not, not my interest. Now that makes me judge him. Uh, the book he's talking about is God of the Machine, and it is one of the best books I have ever read in my life. Now, if you haven't read it, ladies and gentlemen, you are missing out. It is one of the things you should read before you read any other books. God of the Machine by Isabel Patterson. It is impossible for me to impart to you how wonderful it is. I tried to do videos on it once, and I found I was basically going to have to read every single sentence of it. And maybe I should have done that. I regret it now, because now I would like to go back once in a while and watch a video I've done on Isabel Patterson. I never did them, because it was so perfectly, utterly, beautifully dense that I would have just had to read sentence by sentence. I regret now that I didn't actually do that. So you've got to go get that book and read it, ladies and gentlemen. It is beautiful, lovely, awesome, powerful, amazing. Uh, the fact that this guy couldn't get it, I believe. I believe him. Yeah, but it, it all starts with this power of ideas, the power of ideas. Ideas will change the world and so forth, the power of ideas. Um, this is just is very much classical liberalism. And we find this in Atlas Shrugged, but we did not see this in the Fountainhead. So this guy has a problem with classical liberalism sneaking into Ayn Rand's philosophy in uh, Atlas Shrugged. And then he says, free markets never occurs in the fountainhead. This guy is a train wreck. Okay? Uh, I, I don't even know where to start untying him. He doesn't rise to the level of 
being involved with objectivism at all. He does not understand the philosophy or what's going on. And he doesn't understand it in essentials. He must be coming from somewhere else. He's coming at objectivism from somewhere else, either religion or, uh, or racism or something like that. And he's, he's trying to make objectivism fit his objectively true belief about something, whatever it is. Nationalism? I don't know what it is, but he's bending objectivism into boxes that it's just, just is ridiculous uh, because of his world view. So this guy's not an objectivist. He comes at objectivism with some other set of assumptions, which is just wrecking him. He's just bizarre. Um, so, what do we see today? Where are these ideas that are that are, that are fighting the, the, the totalitarians? China is becoming an increasingly powerful entity, and supposedly <clears throat> through free trade, the Chinese would have would it would be at this point realizing. The, the madness of the ways, oh, you should, you see, free markets will lead to free minds. Now, why didn't we trade with Soviet Russia, but we trade with Nazi, we trade with communist China? And why, why wouldn't we even let Russia buy milking machines from us? We wouldn't let them buy machines to milk their cows. Under Reagan Gorbachev. Why is that? And yet we trade, why do we not trade with communist Cuba? Why do we shut them off? Yet we trade with communist China. Now, I believe it's just money. I believe it's just money. That many people, let's open up some factories over there. We'll pay you, you know, slave labor prices to get things made, cheap, easy things. I, I think it was just money. Right? And if we wouldn't have trade, didn't have trade, if we shan't have traded with China, then it would have collapsed eventually like Soviet Russia. That's what I think. So I don't know. I don't know why we did I think it's garbage. I think that we shouldn't be doing it. And I also don't think it's a big deal either now that we're doing it, as long as we don't sell them nuclear weapons or something. I don't think that trading with them uh, hurts us. I think we're just going to get stronger. It's definitely weakening the Communist Party. It's changing their society. It's importing America's way of life. It's it's making everybody in the world richer. Um, I don't. I can't find very many bad things about it. Uh, Americans seem to be poorer in some respects because some of their factory jobs are gone. But let's remember that Americans weren't willing to work in those factory jobs for the wages that w Americans were willing to pay for the goods. So we would have had to produce uh, tariff walls or something and restrict people and say, no, you can't buy from Joe's factory in China. You have to buy from Joe's factory in Alabama. Make a law and stop him from free trade, from voluntarily trading. I believe that's legitimate in cases of national security, but those are pretty few and far between. Well, I don't know what to say about this guy. He's a freaking mess. Bruno's a leftivism cafe, huh? No, fail. This guy's a mess. He's not even substantive enough to to uh, to fight against here. And, and free market, you know, a free system of government and so forth. We don't see this at all. So, so much for that. So much for the free market um, changing something in China. The only thing it has done is move all our manufacturing to China, and so now we are completely dependent on a communist dictatorship. And that's what free markets have given us. There's no mention of free markets in the fountainhead, just to be clear. Um, now, uh, I believe we can uh, do what we need to, right? America is the smartest, freest, richest country in the world, okay? If we need to manufacture something, we will manufacture it, whatever it is, all right? And it's, if, if we can get it cheaper at our convenience over there, we should. Um, and it's it's... You know, if it's a question of national security, the government should get involved. But why should the government get involved otherwise? Just to make some people comfortable at the expense of other people? Why should I have to pay $500 for a TV so that some fat, lazy white person can work at a TV factory? Why shouldn't I be able to buy a $100 TV and let uh, 20 Chinese people build it for me instead of one fat, lazy white person who uses a bunch of high-tech machines and stuff to labor-save? And the Chinese do it all by hand with magnifying glasses and tweezers. 
right? What's better about the white fat person than all the 20 Chinese? Why shouldn't they get my money instead of the white fat person, see? And besides, what if maybe you say, well, the white fat person, blah, 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 he's in your territory, etc. All right, well, maybe it's my choice. Maybe I just like Chinese people better. Maybe I just don't want a $500 TV that's going to break after a few months. Maybe I'd rather to have a $100 TV that's going to last me a year or two. All right? That's what I think of sending all our factories to China. What I don't want uh, some lazy, fat, white dude getting paid more so that I have to pay more for something that's not as well made. Same thing goes with Fords and Chevys that are not as well made as Toyotas, right? Used to go 50, 60,000 miles, to the car was done. And along come Toyotas that go 100, 140, 180, 200,000. Now, now Chevys do it too, because they had to to compete. All right, so free trade is better for everybody, okay? So I don't know what to say to this guy. The, so Iran has always been extremely anti-totalitarian against this intrusion of the government in, in, the, in the life and the private affairs of the, the superior men. She doesn't use that word anymore after the fountainhead, but it's essentially what she's talking about. Did she use it in the fountainhead, superior men? And uh, there's also a remnant of this in Alistair in the separation. So the, the ideal men, the superior men, have separated from society on... Um, They've retreated to God's Gulch. Well, that's that's obviously a remnant of the proto-objectivism. They weren't superior, were they? They were just the ones that were still willing to to be moral. They were the ones who didn't accept the the moochers' morality. They weren't superior. They were superior in in their choice. The idea that no, you're not going to change people's minds. Just forget about it. Just let them be. <coughs> let, the, 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 let them fall of, of their own weight. And um, we don't see this in ableftivism at all. In ableftivism, there's none of this. In ableftivism, it's all, it's all different. It's all egalitarian. It's all equalist. It, it's the ableftivists are more worried about immigrants than Americans. And uh, so there's no, there's no sense of to hell with others. If, if you know we're going to worry about ourselves, there's none of that. None of that whatsoever. They're not interested in helping. Now, see, this is just equating stuff. He's just equating and conflating and drawing weird, bizarre parallels. This is bizarre. Oi, polloi. Let me see if I could follow what he did there. That was a mess, wasn't it? Worried about immigrants than Americans. And uh, so there's no... It's all different. It's all egalitarian. It's all equalist. It's, the ableftivists are more worried about immigrants than Americans. That's where everything changed pretty sharp there, didn't it? They're more worried about immigrants than Americans. Now, are those ableftivists? Who's more worried about immigrants than Americans? You mean they want immigrants to come? They want now people who want open borders, objectivists who want open borders. You're gonna have to show me somewhere that open borders is the thing. Just because immigration's a thing, does that mean open borders is a thing? Now, if open borders is a thing, do we get to talk about the welfare state too? Uh, like, they want open borders because it's achievable, right? They can see that it's a thing that's going to happen. Like, is that a good idea with the welfare state? Look at Europe. Is it really a good idea? So, that's what I have to say about that subject. But he is a mess. It's all different. It's all egalitarian. It's all equalist. It's, the ableftivists are more worried about immigrants than Americans. And uh, so there's no, there's no sense of the hell with others. Well, what, how are we supposed to worry about Americans instead of immigrants? And how are we supposed to say to hell with others? Of course, we're just supposed to protect our rights. These are just false alternatives that he gives. This is just a false dichotomy he's working with. If, if you know, we're going to worry about ourselves. There's none of that. None of that whatsoever. They're not interested in helping their group uh, at all. Of course... Helping your group, huh? No, they're worried about you stopping individuals from helping themselves, ostensibly. Which I'm not against, uh, you know, individuals helping themselves. I'm against them coming here and getting on a government teat, which is actually what's happening. So if you want to be objective and real world about it, we're not allowing objective, we're not allowing individuals to come to America and better their lives. 
we're allowing them to come here and suck on a huge government teat. That's what's really happening. So let's talk about that. Let's not hide our heads in the sand about that fact, but this guy uh, doesn't seem to have it. I don't know what his goal is then. What's your what, what's his goal then? A Nazi Nazi states of America, the United States of America with no immigration, uh, so that every all the wealth is for us. Is that what it is? We would very quickly become uh, lazy people who were living off of our parents' wealth, and uh, we wouldn't produce anymore. That's what happens. So you. Uh, shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves in a generation then they start over uh, there's something about that so uh, we would all just get rich and comfortable and decadent I think that's what I think would happen these of leftists most of them are not even Americans they're imported immigrants so they don't they don't feel American uh alright so now he's making a stab at everybody he says is an obleftivist they're all immigrants uh, Euron Brook is one of those, right? Now, Peacock doesn't qualify as an obleftivist, right? Am I correct about that? Because of certain views he has, he doesn't qualify as an obleftivist? Or has he come out for open borders and he qualifies as an obleftivist? I know it's a stupid term. I'm just trying to get my head around what the controversy is about. And if this guy is any indication, then... Uh, it's a mess, and all we need to do is argue against a few Democrats in, in the objectivist sphere, in the objective sphere. There are some Democrats in the objective sphere who are a little, little bit silly. Now, this guy is doing stuff that's crazy. I cannot imagine this guy. I can't get on board with this guy. This guy's crazy. Um, so why would they have any interest in the, in, the, in the Americans over the foreigners? But, of course, if you're watching this, you're probably part of it country and uh, you feel part of that country and uh, you would put your countrymen before others <laughs> that's part of selfishness would I put my countrymen before others I would take Tommy Robinson or Sauron of Akkad uh, before a lot of my fellow countrymen actually can I trade a, can I trade one of my countrymen who's uh, AOC or or the other Ibrahim Alaham or whatever they are or the squad, there's four of them in that damn squad. Can we trade those four for uh, Sauron of Akkad and, uh, you know, uh, uh, who, who else? You know, give me, I'll tell, just for, let me give you those four and I'll take Sargon of Akkad. There's a trade. And Tommy Robinson, two for four. Fair enough? No, I don't give a shit about my countrymen unless they're good people. I'd rather have good people from abroad than shitty people at home. Bring the, bring the good people from abroad. Now, how are we going to make sure we get good people from abroad? The way they did it in the 1800s was no welfare state. You come here. You have to do it. And if you don't, then get out. And one out of three immigrants left within a couple of years of coming to America. One out of three. That's no longer the, the case. Why would they leave? You know, thank God ICE is deporting some of them. But why would you leave? You get here and you're comfortable, you get on welfare, food stamps, no reason to leave. So we're keeping, we're getting shitty people and we're keeping them. Used to be the shitty lazy people would go back home. Not anymore. This is it. Um, you, you put yourself before others and you put those most similar to you above others that are less similar to you. This seems such like, such, like such a basic concept that have left this, have denied this completely. Um... So, I don't know, I'm just rambling here. I, I'm i starting to see that I will be an obleftivist then. I'm afraid I'm an obleftivist, eh? All right, how am I going to attack obleftivists if I'm an obleftivist? All right, so those of you who said that this is a nebulous term without meaning, and I said, yes, I might regret using it, well, if, if I define myself as an obleftivist, then I'll start to know what's going on, huh? Um, I guess this is a video where I'm making some sort of comeback. I wanted to speak about this again, since nobody's actually speaking of it. People are still, still in 2019, you know, just seeing these videos against Yawon Book. Yawon Book, the, the 77 effort, because the thing oh, ought into existence, something that was not there. And what do we call that? We, we call that property. When think, that's the whole basis of the property rights and objectivist theory, the intellectual property. So since... All right, the Founding Fathers 
did an act and that brought property into existence and now it's their country now they can do what they want with it that's his premise here um, but they can do what they want with it why because they have rights but other individuals have rights too he wouldn't be talking about these things unless we allowed immigration now immigration stands the welfare state is the problem we're bringing in immigrants who would not stay in the 1800s these immigrants would come they wouldn't be able to get a job or the jobs would be too hard and they'd retreat back to their family and friends and live with some cousin back in their homeland like they did in the 1800s and we would only keep the industrious hard-working people who were able to make it that's the way it should be and as soon as we have the welfare state dismantled I will be in favor, favor of open borders as soon as the welfare state is dismantled. This guy is painful. Uh, he probably says something else. There was something there. I was, no, I just addressed it. All right, Bruno. What do you think of that? I don't think much of you. Boy, oh boy. Maybe I'll go look at some of his other videos and see if any of them are substantive. But here's an interesting one here. CC says, your best video yet. Really? Well, that's not very promising. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cropper out.